I told someone in my comments that I synthesized the potassium iodate that I used for my Briggs Rauscher demonstration myself, and I got a lot of people asking how I did it, so here it is. To get started, all I do is dissolve about a quarter mole of potassium permanganate in about 600 milliliters of water. The potassium permanganate is going to work as an oxidizer and oxidize potassium iodide to potassium iodate. Since it requires two molecules of permanganate to oxidize one molecule of iodide, I dissolve about an eighth of a mole of potassium iodide in some water and then pour it into the permanganate solution. You can see here that when the potassium iodide is added, the solution turns a dark brown as the potassium permanganate is reduced to manganese dioxide. The next big problem was trying to separate the insoluble manganese dioxide from the potassium iodate which was still dissolved in the water. This step sucked and it's probably impossible without vacuum filtration because manganese dioxide precipitated in this manner forms very very small particles that make the mixture very muddy and almost clay like. After about an hour though I was able to filter all of the liquid off and I'm left with a very light yellow potassium iodate solution. I then put it on a hot plate and boil it down to about 100 milliliters before tossing it in the freezer to cool down. This step is going to cause the potassium iodate to crystallize out while any potassium iodide that didn't react is going to stay dissolved in the solution. These crystals were scraped out, washed, and vacuum desiccated and my final yield is 19 grams of potassium iodate which represents a 72% yield. As a fun little final step, I decided to do a quick ideometric titration to determine the rough purity of my final product, and I begin by dissolving 3.16 grams of sodium thiosulfate in 200 milliliters of water. I know I wrote 5 grams, but it's a typo that I can't fix now. I then create two standards using potassium iodate, potassium iodide, hydrochloric acid, and water. A blank is also prepared, which includes all of those ingredients with the exception of the iodate. The idea here is that when you acidify a solution of iodate and iodide, you get iodine, which is really insoluble in solution and binds with excess iodide to form triiodide ions. The mixture is then titrated with thiosulfate, and this reduces the iodine back to iodide, and as that happens, the solution clears up. When it starts to go yellow, that means the endpoint is pretty close, and some starch is added which binds with iodine to form a blue complex which makes the exact endpoint a lot easier to tell. Both of my standardization runs required 28.2 milliliters of the 0.1 molar thiosulfate solution to reach the endpoint. When I ran my blank, it required 12 milliliters to titrate to completion, and this is subtracted from the 28 milliliters. The 12 milliliters required to titrate my tap water are likely due to chlorine or some other sterilization products. In any case, my sample required 28 milliliters to titrate, which means it's basically completely pure and a recrystallization is unnecessary. I hope you found this interesting and consider giving me a follow.